Barrows is a rewarding, challenging, yet very dangerous part of RuneScape that should not be attempted with less than 43 prayer or 59 hit points. The basic concept is that you fight five legendary brothers in their crypts in Mortania, then enter into the underground tunnels where a sixth brother must be found. Once you have killed him, you proceed to a locked door where you have to solve a puzzle to pass to where there is a treasure chest that contains items varying from mine runes to the very powerful Barrow's armor and weapons. These equipment sets are some of the most sought after rewards in all of RuneScape. The other day I was on Wayback Machine looking at Tip.it and RuneHQ again. I do that a lot when I'm bored, but I came across this absolute gem. It is a very detailed guide from the year of 2005. It was last updated on December 1st. 2005 so this is only about seven months after barrows was released not a long time whatsoever but it is incredibly packed with information and i'm very curious to see what it's like and how accurate it is so we're going to follow it word by word based on our stats and we're going to see just how good this guide is just looking through it i see so many mistakes but let's jump right into it it's going to be so fun the guide says there's three ways we can kill the barrows brothers method one magic dart method two normal magic and method three ancient magics now it says that if I have 55 Slayer and 50 Magic, I should use the Magic Dart method over normal Magics. And Ancient Magics is probably the most efficient guide there is out there, but it was much more commonplace to use Magic Dart, so that's what I'm going to go with. Normally I would use Claws of Guthix here, but apparently it's not listed in the guide. It was definitely out at this time period, so I'm actually kind of surprised it's not here. The next part of this guide is your inventory's worn. Now it breaks it down into two sections, lower level, which is under 90, and higher level, which is 90 plus. Now right off the bat, I find this kind of weird because assuming that higher levels are richer, which in most cases is definitely true, but a lot of this stuff you could definitely wear at under level 90, so I'm shocked that it really puts it into two major categories like that. Where your highest magic attack bonus? Mystic Robes, Amulet of Glory, God Cape, and a Farseal Helmet are all suggested. Now, it was believed back then that having a very high magic attack bonus was the meta, and you'd be able to hit them more often, and you'd be able to do faster trips. A lot of people know today that that's actually debunked, and you should not wear magic gear when maging Barrows. They have such a low magic defense level where it does not really matter what your magic attack bonus is, it could be negative, positive, you'd pretty much hit it the exact same. Check us out, we're rocking max 2005 Barrows gear right now, according to the guide. Now I can instantly think of something a little better, like a Fury, but we're gonna follow the guide exactly how it is. We're not gonna change a thing about it. If you're a pro, I guess you'd swap it for a Sears ring as well, but I mean, Ring of Wealth, totally understandable. In 2005, you could not pick up your stuff when you died, unless somebody was very generous and actually picked it up for you and gave it back, which I'm sure was pretty rare because everyone was pretty greedy. Everyone still is pretty greedy. I mean, look, in 2005, I was 10 years old and if you died in Barrows and I was standing there chilling, doing my thing, minding my own business, and I saw your Darox play buddy on the ground, I'm gonna pick it up and you probably would never see that again. Sorry, but hey, I was a young kid. The inventories as a whole aren't too bad. I really like the lower level one. You gotta remember the Dragon Longsword was a very fabled weapon back then. Everyone wanted it and it was great. The Dragon Scimitar was out, but the thing is no one really wanted to do Monkey Madness. It was scary, at least in my friend group. That's how all my friends thought it was. It's just some scary quests that you could die and lose all your stuff. But the prayer potion threes, they could definitely be made into fours. For the higher level gear, I have some issues with. Now, with no prayer pots, that is totally fine if you wanted to do a one inventory trip and then bank. I guess if you wanted to save money, this would be the way you do it. Now, with that method, the shark issue, you have lobsters. I would definitely bring sharks instead. You're risking all this gear, and if you die, you're not going to get your stuff back. My 10-year-old self would have jacked your stuff in a heartbeat. But personally, if I was writing this guide back in 05 with my knowledge now, I would say bring prayer pots just so you can maximize the amount of chests you do in one trip because the walk back was pretty long. I just want to give a quick disclaimer saying I am in no way bashing this 2005 guide. The information in this guide for only being out seven months is absolutely outstanding. It is A plus material for 2005 and I completely respect it. The only reason why I'm tearing it apart is to see how far we've come with the information we know about Barrows all the way from 2005 to 2019. Since we're not on the ancient spellbook, the fastest way that we're going to get to Barrows is teleport using the Ectophile, run through Canifis, walk underneath the dungeon, run over the bridge, through the swamp, take the boat, walk over the bridge again, and then walk into Barrows. So the first step is to make sure we have prayer. I don't know why it's telling me this now after it told me to walk here, but we have our full prayer points and it says the closest teleport to an altar is Lumbridge and I guess that's why we have earth runes, law runes, and an air staff. 
says to make sure we have auto cast selected, go into Darok, protect from melee, and then attack Barrows. It says to be very careful sidestepping and freezing, so that's my way of saying, all right, well, let's just tank it and make sure we have prayer on. Easy peasy, not even 20 points used, on to the next brother. This part of the guide is actually rather interesting. It says if I have 90 attack to melee Aram instead of maging him. Well, I guess I'm doing neither of those. I'm actually shocked by the accuracy of the statement. Now, I'm not sure if 90 attack is the exact cutoff for melee being faster than magic, but what really strikes me is the fact that they knew magic level played a role in magic defense. I didn't even know that for the longest time. The fact that people knew that in 05 is mind boggling to me. I like how precise this guide is. It specifically said that if I had a Carol Tunnel to come on over to Varric and pray against it and make sure I save as much food as possible. All right, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. It didn't hit me too much, although we're only at 44 prayer points now. Can we pull through? Things are getting pretty serious now. It wants us to wear armor and shield and still auto cast, but with our armor on this time. It also says you may notice a small difference in your casting ability due to your lower magic bonus. So we all know that that is debunked, but let's prove them wrong anyway. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm 99 magic, but there was literally no difference in the DPS when I was against Darok and against Varric. Against Tor, I guess the same exact strategy as Guthans, just tank it when you run out of prayer and make sure you eat if you get hit. And it, oh, 19, Torak, take it easy on me. It did warn me about the Barrows Brothers getting lucky with hits, especially against Arams, but it looks like Torag is jumping the gun here. All right, now here's where we wear our ranged gear, our magic short bow, and we spec with the magic short bow. It's said to be very careful because things can go sour very, very quick. Now, I'm 99 defense and 99 magic and 99 range, so this is pretty much the easy it's going to get. And it is pretty easy, but I can imagine level 70, maybe here, 70 range, 70 magic, getting absolutely owned. But pretty straightforward. And this guide is actually super advanced for its time. It talks about sidestepping in the tunnels and in the catacombs and even save spotting. Now, I can't show you save spotting because I have Carol's as a tunnel, but here are some pictures from the guides. When looking at the guide, it literally said if you get Carol as a tunnel, it is your hardest tunnel and you will take damage. There is no other explanation. It tells me now that if I want to, I could bring an extra prayer pot just in case this happens, but it literally tells me nothing I can really do about it. Just tank it. Ah, uh, now this might be a little controversial. Now, I know some people might say it's not worth the get kill count and it's just better to kill the brothers and maximize your kills per hour. Some people say to go for kill count, but in this guide, it says don't bother killing too many. Now that's a little vague. So I'm gonna kill three because I think three for me is not too many, but not too little. If I was reading this guide, I'd probably think around three if I was a little kid. I keep trying to go back to my little kid mindset here, but we're gonna kill three monsters. The first three monsters I see, and whatever we get as a percentage, that's what we're going to go with. All right, this is our last monster before we loot the chest. Now, something I've always loved to do at Barrows, and I'm sure a lot of people still love to do this, but it's just to take off your armor and fill up your entire inventory and then click on it. I mean, now it prompts the open screen like this, and we didn't get lucky, but then it drops on the floor, and it's the only way that a Barrows item could be on the floor and not be broken. I've always just found that rather interesting. But... Eh, crappy loot, didn't really expect much. But here's where we would now teleport to Lumbridge, recharge her prayer, and then ectophile back. Oh, you thought this guide was over, but no. There is something that is so exciting that I found on this guide, and I really want to try it out. There's a section on this guide that says we can cannon the Barrows Brothers. I've never even thought about doing this because I've probably never seen it in my life. You will never hear this in a guide, and I really want to try it out to see what happens. This is actually on the guide, and it even shows a little guy safe spotting. I know it's best to maximize my attack bonuses for a cannon, but if we look at this picture right here, the guy has a mystic top on, rune legs, and a rune kite. So we're just going to wear an Aram's top, Darak legs, and an Abi shield and roll with that. All right, in the picture, he's killing Varix, so that's what we're going to do. I probably should have laid the cannon down before I did this. I, all right, yeah, I, I, I totally just messed up there. <laughs> Even this guy, he's like, he's like, LMFAO, that's a new one. <laughs> this is taking so long. Oh my gosh, there it is. I like it. This guy knows what's good. Oh crap, we're out of cannonballs, and it's like a fourth dead at most look at this everyone's so confused <laughs> my thoughts exactly <laughs> wow that took exactly five minutes and i used 59 cannonballs all for one varix kill 
I don't know why this is in the guide. I really, really don't. This that it has to be like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This was an absolute blast to make. If you want to see more of these, let me know. Give me some ideas. This was so much fun to make. But if you did like the video, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.